She's in good health and only takes metformin for a slightly elevated blood sugar. Exam reveals a painful range of motion of the hip, of the right hip with both internal and external motion markedly limited at to 30% of the unaffected hip, which has normal range. The right leg has good blood supply to the foot and ankle, but the leg is noted to be two inches shorter than the normal leg. Radiographs reveal severe osteoarthritis of the hip with no joint space pre present in association with osteophytes, both medial and lateral in the acetabular area. The metal pin has eroded into the acetabulum from the position to in the femoral neck. Plan is to, after medical clearance, accomplish a total hip arthroplasty. Expected results, possible complications, alternative uh, procedures were outlined to the patient, both orally and in written form. She appeared to understand and signed the consent form. Neuro 1, 27-year-old male was found down last night, poorly responsive. He was taken to an outside hospital. He was intubated and transferred to the emergency room here. This morning, the patient's clinical exam declined. He started posturing. CT scan of the head revealed blossoming of his bilateral frontal intraparenchymal hemorrhages, worse on the left side, along with small bilateral frontal subdural hematomas. The decision was made to proceed to surgery. The previously planned incision was opened sharply. Dissection was carried down to using electrocautery all the way until the skull was reached. The skin flip was then reflected anteriorly. We were meticulous in protecting the previously placed right frontal AVD. The temporalis muscle was split along the edges of our incision bilaterally and then reflected anteriorly on both sides. The skin flap along with the temporalis muscles were secured in place using fish hooks. Using the acorn drill bit burr holes were strategically placed one on each side of the superior sagittal sinus posteriorly and anteriorly. Number two, 25-year-old male was transferred from an outside hospital after suffering a possible seizure. Per report, he had experienced neck pain for three days prior to being seen at the outside hospital. His symptoms were described as a seizure, a seizure-like activity, including flailing of the arms and kicking of the legs that would last up to 30 seconds. A lumbar puncture was performed. The patient was started on Kepler and Atlantin. He was also given Ativan before being transferred here. The patient was immediately treated for status epilepticus. His workup included an MRI of the brain that showed an acute left pontine infarct and an MRA that revealed a right vertebral artery stenosis and left vertebral artery dissection. Neurosurgery was consulted for further assessment. Number three, 65-year-old female with past medical history of left MCA infarct status post mechanical thrombolectomy and hemicraniectomy and now status post craniaplasty with her native bone flap developed slow gradual breakdown of her scalp of her scalp over her craniaplasty site. This led to exposed bone with subsequent infection. In the ear, there was frankly purulent material coming from the wound. The